yeah, I'm like the only white guy here they've ever seen. So treat me like I'm a celebrity. I'm like a, it's like being a white guy in an African low village. It does look like a bit. Like here, you have this really cool house. It always plays cool music. It's covered up like it's an entrance to uh, King Kong or something. But yeah, it's a more kind of African kind of culture. We do have like, this kind of favela kind of style in, um, in Paraguay as well. But here it's more kind of like African kind of Costa Rican kind of tropical kind of mix. I am missing Saturday, the Tether Day of her. Uh, and they have like, the woods that's there. Like, I guess we last time in the last video where the uh, we talked about the girls are becoming um have all got brain damage in this day and age. You know, complete they've completely zombified compared to the girls in uh, 2010. I mean you, if you look at Tori Black, um Tori Black went in a she's in a prime. She was like the ultimate kind of like sexiest girl in the world and in my opinion anyway, everyone's got a different taste. But these days, days you can't find that. I mean, I found one girl that had the body of a uh, Tory Black in Fortaleza. She was really hot and sexy. She was really fertile. And she wanted me to... She kept messaging me. She kept... She was really up for it. I mean, those girls with the body of, like, a porn star, you know, they look really... Fuckable, how you say it. I don't, I don't, I don't want to get cancelled. I don't want to get, you know, by, by saying that. But you know what I mean? They have that shape of the body, really slim, really perfect, really tight, really... And uh, those are the girls that are always really up for it. Um, it's always the fat or the, the seven or eights, you know, or the uh, a bit overweight or a bit podgy girls that are always angry and always trying to bring you down to their level. Uh, so never, so never fair, guys. It's always the hottest girls that uh, are always up for it. They're always down to fucking uh, DTF. But yeah, I don't want to get cancelled. But yeah, hey, Philly, how are you doing? <laughs> but here's really cool. Yeah, they don't have like, they have a they have some dogs barking in you, in you if you go if you walk. Further, you know, down the um, down the woods, and you come to a trail. They have to do, especially at nighttime. They do have dogs barking here, but here in this little village, it's really cool. And do have people. You do. Have, this is Brazil, so people will stare. People stare at you like, like you're uh, some kind of a zombie ghost or whatever, or some kind of alien. But yeah, it's really cool, really peaceful. People say, "What are you doing here? What are you doing here?" Like, but I just like it. It's just really. The energy is really cool, really good escape. Because in the city, it's all about money. It's all stressed out. Everyone drinks so much coffee and cocaine. You, you go out, you walk the streets, and everyone's like, so money, 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 give me money, give me money. And everyone's just trying to bring you to their own level. And um, this is just like, it reminds me, you know when you see, um, I've, you know when you go to your mother's house, um, I mean, and you, or your grandma's house, you know, and you're going to escape to the village or whatever, and she cooks a nice Sunday dinner. And you go away feeling really revived and really strong. I, I don't have that now, but I had that growing up, you know. I, I've not had that for like 10 years because I've not seen my family for like maybe 10 years or seven years at least. Uh, but yeah, it's good for you anyway, but like, and it, it's that same kind of feeling, you know. I will stay with Vinny and his mother. He's like 35 or whatever. He lives with his mother, he's 35 or 40. And he, uh, even though he looks 21, um, and they cook, they, they cook your potatoes, they cook you all these natural food, foods, and you just feel really strong and really revived. And that's what I need, because like in the city, when you're always on the go, even everything you eat, eat your stuff you buy in the markets and everything, it's always just full of pesticides and stuff like that. Um, and I'm not saying be vegan or be, be anything like this, because um, I uh, have eaten chicken a lot of the past, um, the past week. I've had a big cheat day. I, I ate a lot of Chinese, this Chinese chicken, and uh, I feel stronger than ever. So I think, I keep saying balance is all about it, you know. I'm not saying, people say, oh, I'd go vegan. If I, if I went 100% vegan, I think I would go through a stage where I would feel really good um, like when I first started. But then after a while, you want only balance. Well, oh, look at this white horse right in the middle of it. You need balance, you know. After a while, you do, would need some, uh, you would feel depleted from vitamin Bs, Biv, and um, the strength, because it gives you vitamins and stuff like that. So yeah, we are. People got do all these diets. Oh, what's the best diet? Should I go crazy uh, carnival? They have this crazy carnival diet that's going crazy all the time, just trying to. But it's all about balance, you know. He doesn't eat any vegetables. It's all about balance, you know. Everything's going to kill you on a long enough timeline. Um, you know, everything is bad for you in some way. You can't eat anything. If you're going to think, oh, I need to eat something that's perfect, then you're going to live in a cage and eggs and uh, nuts, and you're going to be miserable for your whole life. Even then, eat eggs, people say, oh, eggs are bad for you. Even nuts are bad for you. Nuts, 
I've eaten a lot of um, I've been eating a lot of Brazilian diet the past uh, the past month all month of June beans and uh, peanuts and mandarin and I felt sick I felt really kind of feminine as it was I didn't feel strong at all um, it would and I realized and I forgot I forgot that peanuts are full of estrogen um, and beans are full of estrogen as well and I felt really sick and I finally I finally developed uh, not a gag reflex, <laughs> but I kind of got sick to the stomach of just beans and peanuts and a mandarin and all these peanut bars everywhere and I'm, I'm never going to have them ever again. Well, that's what I feel like anyways, and I just had some Chinese, some uh, all... This week is like a chicken cheat meal and I feel really strong. But yeah, like I was saying, um, it's just I just come here for like a day or two just to... and they have um, adventures all around, waterfall kind of adventures, camping kind of adventures. Um, and you can have those in Rio, like, uh, can't kind of have them, but you're always close to the city as well, and you just feel kind of dangerous and fair, you don't, can't relax at all. It is the same kind of energy where you just, I feel like, you know, Superman in Smallville, you know, when he just comes to a farm to escape society. Because um, this is real life, you know, you have real fruits, real vegetables, and people, people feel alive, people are really nice as well. Like, the mother here is just so nice to drop something. And like she's just so kind, just like like I, I've been I've lived here for like I, I come in here to escape here, so I've been here for like an average like two weeks, uh, and all the days. And she just gives me a hug and everything. She treats me like I'm a son, and it's just great. And then the guy said, "Oh no, come and live with us." He wants me to live with him, and I wouldn't mind it. I wouldn't mind living here. Um, I work out just by lifting up the chair, as you saw, you know, and uh, doing my own workout. But yeah, we'll go to the main street. This is Food of Fortune, Nova Guazu. And you have hiking ventures. That way, camping ventures, they have a volcano that way. That way, and you have the huge mountain over there, just there, past the building that I'll show you in a bit. And like in my other video, they have uh, all the Costa Rican kind of uh, waterfall and um, tropical kind of adventures, mountain climbing and the natural pool you can swim in, like Bali. He, uh, all, all that way up behind me and it's just yeah it looks like it's like you're in Costa Rica, Bali or anywhere else people come here to hike and uh, yeah I was hiking and I was this woman was speaking to me saying oh she's a bit crazy she's going crazy about how the city life is no this is real life this is good and I kept saying yeah in Sidadi all, all they talk about is the NATO sex the NATO sex and it's right you see people on Instagram they just look miserable and people they look like they want to kill themselves even girls because all they follow is what people say, you know, all they, all they care about is wanting to fit in. But hey, you meet girls and you meet people and they're just so happy. They're so happy. Um, yeah, and in the city, they just, you can't find them this happy. And I feel that way as well. Like, you just cook it. Like, I slept in today and uh, there's no stress or anything. People are just like, oh, no, you can do what you want. Just stress. And we cook your food and move on. They cook, or cook your food, you don't have to do anything, you don't have to work, you don't have to do anything for us, you don't have to pay for anything. And it's always been like that for, for every time I'm here, and it's just amazing. So yeah, so yeah, come live with us, come stay with us, it's no problem. And um, yeah, it's just great. And uh, you walk the streets here and they, they just pick, uh, people follow you and go, oh, hold on, hold on, this kids follow you, it's great. Yeah, oh, you can't see the mountain. The mountain's covered up by clouds. But they usually have the big, Death Mountain, I call it. It's like something out of Legend of Zelda, right behind me. But yeah, as I was saying, like, I mean, that's the good and the bad, though, with uh, internet. <laughs> I keep wondering my stories, but yeah. Like, if you, like, um, us guys and girls and stuff, you're spoiled by the internet. So if you're going to be spoiled by something, there's always going to be downside. If you're given something, nothing's for free. So uh, all this technology in this day and age, it's got to have a downside, and it has a downside with the body and the way it's killed the fertile, sexy woman and, ma and man as well, as well because he's, if you're constantly on your phone 90% of the day, which is how a lot of people are, some sunset's amazing. Um, then you're basically just like that geek in high school that was just glued to his Game Boy at the time, trying to catch all the Pokemon, addicted to pixels on the screen like it's real. Like it's reality. I'm getting stressed over over it. 
an Asian to ice of ice because you're stressed over nothing. Um, but yeah, in my life, I'm, I'm just thinking about going back to the beach, being at one with nature, just relaxing and drinking some tether day. I'm going to go to Baja Juca next, and uh, I found this place that f sells tether day and mate. So I'm going to go there and relax on the beach and see if that's the the setting I want to just retire to, to where I can just be happy and can just be at peace and find my little heaven to escape from all the bullshit of the world. Because everything's bullshit art from people these days. People are just stressed out to bring people to their own. Like if you see me on movie videos, all I'll just say is the same thing over and over again. I just say, you know, the same quotes, like there's no such thing as a selfless deed by uh, the famous philosopher, uh, Bertrand Russell, I think it was, or Socrates. I don't know if, no, it's probably Bertrand Russell, I think it's a bit later. It's right, because like, people just want you to use you for whatever they can, you know, because we're all animals at the end of the day. We all want to uh, win, beat the uh, battle for, for, for survival. And we do that by, you know, we do that with us humans by inventions and lying. Um, indoctrinating women because women all they do is follow media they don't follow the fire within these days the girls they follow what people say and they want to fit in which is the biggest waste but you find like the girl I met in uh, Fortaleza she was the uh, Tory Black kind of guy and she was really sexy she couldn't keep, keep her eyes off me as well like she passed me um, like I, I, I saw her she was like 17 at the time so I had to wait until she was 18 um, but I, I got her Instagram, I got her WhatsApp, even though she's with family, I, like I was at the bus stop in Fortaleza and she just passed me and she just looked at me, she just kept looking, she couldn't take her eyes off me and uh, I looked at her and she looked, back, she kept looking back at me. So as I thought, okay, I'll go after her, I started walking after her and she started looking back at me and smiling and she kept staring at me and she had the body of like prime Tory Black and I was like blown away. Um, but yeah, she was obviously definitely promiscuous, she probably definitely had sex a lot of times already um, she was with family though uh, she was with her sister so I just got Instagram but then she kept messaging me she's the only Brazilian in all of Brazil who kept messaging me saying oh come back come over here come to mine she was ill though uh, for the last two days that I was there she couldn't for the last two days I was there so I said oh I'm going back to Rio but even when I went back to Rio she uh, kept saying oh come back I want to meet you and um, she said she wants to have sex with me and all this kind of stuff um but uh, I was too late, she got married, she got pregnant, obviously. Cause girls like that, it's the prime for, you know, for tons of guys that are gonna be there. Um, but yeah, she was really, she had to, I mean, she didn't have the perfect face, cause you know, Brazilians usually have uh, the African kind of mix in the year, uh, which would be perfect for African black guys, but not for me, but she had the perfect body, like the Tory Black porn star kind of body. And yeah, but she, so never fear, guys. Never think, oh, this girl is, um, she doesn't like me, she's not being receptive enough, you know. It's usually the girls that aren't 10 out of 10s, you know, that don't fit you, right? I mean, I'm, I'm, I like girls that I like th that, I like that, you know, that are really, you know, not really, yeah, really promiscuous, but really open minded, really cool. Because I'm at that stage in my life where I'm traveling around the world. I've never been able to, throughout all my youth, I couldn't travel around the world. I was always training and working hard and training like eight hours a day. So I never had that freedom. Um, so now I'm getting out of my system now. But I'm sure, you know, I've, I do have times where, you know, I, think I get stressed out and think, oh God, I just need someone to just cuddle up to and everything. Yeah. We all have those moments. And uh, when you get stressed out and just the world comes down on you and you, I had that the past the, pa the past week I was sick and I just thought oh, I just wish someone could just look after me and just make me sleep and cuddle up to you know <laughs> kind of like but then you think oh no that person might think that she's trying to be your mother or whatever so yeah but yeah she was really like the sexiest had the sexiest body and everything and she was just obviously might, not to a lot of Brazilians or other guys because I think a lot of guys like big bums big boobies and all this kind of stuff I'm not into that uh, I just find it really t tasteless and like I, I've heard Argentinians a lot, Mazisto, the uh, skin type and everything. But yeah, it's just she was really receptive and it was really cool. She kept saying, "Oh, come back to Fortaleza, come back!" And I thought, oh, "This is this is amazing." I got a really sexy, open-minded, intelligent girl who doesn't play games because a lot of girls I think, "Oh, no, you need to play games. I need to." 
follow what society says, you know, what social media says, what will people think, you know, and social media just made everyone in a big prison and they don't realize how much of a prison they're in. They think they're liberated and they think that they are, you know, free, but they're constantly following what uh, the family or media says from social media. Hola. Uh, yeah, it's really cool here. I can have my telephone out and not be worried about being robbed. Like before when I was even Leblon. Leblon's the best beach. I, like, uh, I felt peace there even with lots of people. Hola. But um, usually I couldn't do that in Ecuador. But hey, but Leblon, I need to go start going to Leblon and going out more, you know. There's so much to do, like people, you can, people, people I mean Brazilians have lived through the whole life and, go, oh, and they say, oh my God, you've, you've lived and experienced more of Brazil than anyone I've ever known, than I, than I've, and I've lived here my whole life. Um, so yeah, it's like that. When I first came here, I'm gonna be like, oh, I'm gonna spend a month in Brazil, I'm gonna do all the adventures, then go home. And it's like, no, it's impossible. There's so much to do here, it's unbelievable. You have, you have um, a different world with each state. It's like a different country. Um, if you want the Maldives, like I said, you have Mad Madagogi, you have different, if you want all, all kind of countries around the world, you have it all in Brazil. Um, so yeah, there's so much to do and I just get pulled in different directions and I need to focus and get my head down with uh, training. So I might do a week, you know, trying to apply all my skills that I've learned and everything to become rich. Because uh, you never know. Because I've got so many things pulling me in different directions, but I'm also scared because of this coronavirus and the way people, uh, well, all this, this, this fake virus and everything, all this propaganda and everything. People trying to get people to stop traveling, to stop liberations. And I'm scared of like, leaving the country in case something happens to me. And I'm not, and I'm not, invite, I'm not allowed to come back again. But yeah, she was like the most. I've never, I've never seen a ten out of ten in Brazil, but I would give this girl a nine point five out of ten, obviously because of the. Uh, I'm, I'm so horrible. No one's perfect, you know. But the, the face, you know, and I'll also because she's, you know, as an African kind of mix, you know, like a lot of Brazilians do. But uh, yeah, she was really lively, open, up for it, kind of promiscuous, and just, you know, she was cool. You know, she wasn't like a lot of girls these days. Like, oh, I can't do this because of that. I can't do this because of what social media says. She was a bit like that. She was like, um, she had to be careful because of her sister. She couldn't come back to my hotel room straight away because of what her sister think, thought. But yeah, fortunately, I might, I don't like going to Fossil because only because it's like a five hour drive away. You know, I might get a flight there, but um, it's like a five hour, no, not a five hour drive, like a five day drive. And it's just torturous on the coach. The coaches there are not good. In Argentina, they're good. They have like, they give, they serve you red wine and they have a really nice TV and the people are cool. But in Brazil, it's just like, it's horrible. Probably not for black people, like the black people like this kind of stuff. Uh, black Americans, uh, they like the, uh, this kind of culture and live lifestyle. It's like on the train, uh, on the train over here. It's like, um, Downtown New York, the Bronx, everyone's shouting, Volo, everyone's desperate for money. Uh, I'm like the only white guy ever, and they're always like shouting, Volo, Volo, and they look at you like white guy like you, like they're about to uh, rob you or something. And, but it's, it's really cool. We're gonna go out to party tonight, anyways. And, so, yeah, a lot of girls, it's really a big waste, because, like, you don't use to find the girl, as, like, the girl I found that was like, she was like totally black in her. When she was 19 or in her early 20s, you can't find girls like that these days. You found girls like that all the time in like 2010, 2011, 2012, 2013. This when it started to go a bit downhill, so where social media and Instagram was invented. I think as soon as Instagram was invented, social, it just made everyone really paranoid and really just jealous of followers, and it just made everyone really unfree. And on their phones, like they're trying to catch followers, like they're trying to catch Pokemon. So they're on the phone all the time, just trying to, you know, like the geek from high school. And uh, I was a geek in high school, so I'm not, I'm not being hate, hating geeks or anything. But I'm saying, as an adult, you know, you you need to, as a when you grow up, you need to um, 
have free time. You need to be strong enough to experience real life, real nature, real sex, real fire. Oi, amiga, Tita Bang, gonna be a YouTuber? <laughs> Bye, yo. <laughs> Ciao, amigas. But yeah, um, it's, yeah, it's, it's really cool. Really. Ah, it's good. Ah, it's good. Ah, it's But yeah, if you, and they just don't, they, I mean, there's no liberation. Obviously, obviously they're not fulfilled and happy because they spend 90% of their time on their phone, which is causing brain damage. You know, the biggest, like in the last video, the biggest factors of brain damage are what all the girls experience. It's being in isolation, not being out in the light and sunlight, face, you know, it's too much screen time, which is all the girls, you know, all the girls are on their phone all the time, too much screen time. Too much loud music and being in isolation, not socialising much, and not having outdoor activities. Basically, living like 99% of girls are living these days who have a phone. This is why. This is also one of the reasons why I'm here. Why I'm in these little. Obviously, I can afford my own apartment. I can afford everything, but keeping on the go and keeping travelling the world and experiencing places like this keeps you on the edge. You know, it keeps you. It's, I, I do find it more comfortable here, but also. Not too comfortable that you get too addicted to social media and Netflix and you know eat ordering fast food delivered to you and everything. Here you have real food and you know um, you go on, out on real adventures. And this is why I like this because you just feel alive. It feels like I'm in the 90s again. Um, like we've just been playing 90s music back at the house and it feels like the summer in England when you're in the, in the 90s. And you can feel like that. Like all you have to like. I felt like. Um, I felt like I was in 2005 or 2003 when my phone wasn't working in December and I was probably one of the happiest times, one of the, one of the most free, I wasn't really too happy because I, I was in Paraguay and uh, obviously everyone there is addicted to the phone because there's nothing to do, there's no adventure to do. But yeah, if you want experience, um, if you say, oh, I really miss this, I really miss the 90s, oh, I really miss the early 2000s, just throw away your phone. Um, just uh, honestly, throw away your phone or delete all your social media and you will feel so happy, it's unbelievable. Like, uh, I, do, I do some of that. Like the past month, I did a bit of that. I've been trying to, I thought I'd do a month, just getting my head down and trying to save money. Uh, do my best to try and get some form, other form of passive income, because my money's uh, running out. I've had some trouble with uh, my pay. Uh, so I could go back, this, something could happen, I could go back to England anytime. Uh, so the past, so I, focus, I said all of June and, and a half of May, I just focused myself on um, saving money, doing couch surfing, and and that causes you to socialise, it causes you to get out there, and uh, doing everything I can to build up some ways so I can make content, so I can get some kind of passive income. I've, and I've been working so hard. There's been times when I've been homeless. I've been homeless many times on the streets, but not like homeless, but like on the streets where. I didn't have a place to sleep for maybe two nights, three nights, or even a week. I think, um, but I'm used to it because I was homeless in Manchester for a month and a half. And I'm kind of glad because you can sleep anywhere. People say, oh, you need your own house, you need this. No, you can sleep if, you, if your body's healthy. You can sleep and look after yourself anywhere. I slept in coaches, you know, sitting down. And I still felt alive, you know, usually in apartments or whatever, or in a, if you're in a big house, you get too comfortable. Everything's for money. Everything just wants you to buy a house, you know, buy my real estate. That's what it's all about. You don't actually need anything, you know. You can live, as, if your body is good, if you look after yourself, then you can live anywhere because the only place you actually live is your body. So, yeah. <laughs> this is videos about everything on the planet. But all these girls, all these people these days, they oh, I need this, I need that. You don't need a fuck, you don't need anything. You know, you just need to look after yourself. And that's why places like this, the outskirts, and places where people don't have all these things chained to them, like Burger King and phones, and that's where the girls are the sexiest. Um, like Fossilizer, Fossilizer isn't a really, this girl I met, she was living in places like this. Uh, the Tory Black kind of girl. She was living like favela kind of houses like this, and I saw her social media, and she wasn't living the rich kind of lifestyle. But she was living places like this. I think she's now pregnant. Um, so I think she's had her first kid. 
So yeah, I was uh, too late. As usual, girls like that, you have to get in there straight away. But uh, no idea. I was just here. Wonder what this fire is. So yeah. So hard times are the best times, you know? If you think, you think oh, I'm homeless and I'm having hard times, that's good, because it pushes you. You've got no option to sleep. So you use that time to, you know, you've got a cell phone. You can you can do anything you can on a cell phone. You can make content, you can... And that's what always pushed me, you know? And um, I'm glad because like, I've pushed myself for the past month and a half doing couch surfing. And then when I, I thought, I'd say, okay, I'll, I'll rest. I was ill, so I thought, okay, I'll rest for about a week. And that rest is was so much more better. I feel so much more strong. Because by the end of by the end of June, I was just spent. I was like walking everywhere. I walked all around Rio de Janeiro, Petropolis, Nova Guazu, all around these adventures, up hiking in the mountains, all around Rio, Baja Tijuca, everywhere. Um, if you've seen my videos and just yeah, and I finally rested and I just felt so good, so sweet. Like I wasn't addicted, I wasn't I wasn't frustrated, I wasn't, oh, I need sex, I need this, I need that, I need this. I was just like, oh, I'm so glad I have food and a bed. And um, it just made me so happy. And that happiness and, you know, freedom, just um, not being frustrated, attracts all the girls and everybody. And I find myself able to speak to girls much easily, not caring about the outcome, because I'm not frustrated. I'm, I'm usually only thinking about, you know, uh, bed and food, you know, and if I get that, I'll be good, you know. It's like MMA fighters, you see these MMA fighters. They're not with like really, really hot, sexy girls, but they're like um, K Khabib, like all he thinks about when you interview him is just like, oh, I need a burger and a Coke. And that's the way I feel a lot of the times. I do one meal a day, so I don't eat, I eat like uh, every 24 hours. And then in those 20, 23 hours, I just try and get my head down do whatever I can to make some more money, or to be rich, or to whatever, or to, to achieve my goals, uh, or to travel the world, or to do my next objective. And that's good, because I've achieved so much, and I feel, you know, I've learned Spanish, learned Portuguese, traveled the world, and if I ate three meals a day, I wouldn't, be, I wouldn't have been able to do that, because there's no time. And after that, you reward yourself with food, you think, the food and the rest tastes so much more better and you experience it so much more better um, when you did the work first. You know, I thought, when you reward yourself afterwards, you think, okay, I can have food now, I can have a bed now. And, uh, but um, I, I, I reward myself after I've done the, the job first and after I've gotten ahead of the, the rest of the people. You know, because uh, everyone's in a race 24-7 just, and it's getting harder day by day, everyone's just making up bullshit. But at the end of the day, all you got to remember, it's just bullshit. It's every, you know, people are just trying to sell you stuff all the time. And the girls are just getting worse and worse. And well as, as well as guys, not just girls. Uh, guys are getting really lazy, really soy boys. And obviously if a guy's, girls are getting worse, they settle for soy boy kind of guys. They settle for the low kind. Oh, hola. <laughs> Oi, so if you're a good, if you're if you're a guy like me and you find that, but if you find like um, a lot of girls don't like you and you're like frustrated, like oh why these girls don't like me? It's like no, they're infertile. A lot of them don't like anything. All they like is McDonald's um, and they look miserable. You just look in their Instagram. If they're miserable and they look, like, look into their eyes, and if they're miserable and look like they want to blow their brains out, which a lot of girls do, they're miserable. All they care about is what society thinks. And uh, like the famous Napoleon Hill said, he said that if the main reason why people fail is because they care about what society, uh, care about what their friends, family, and the neighbors think. And that's like 99% of girls, they all they care about is Instagram. Instagram has just destroyed all the happiness in women. And they don't know anything else. A lot of these young girls are born in like, what, what, like 2002 or whatever. So by the time a teenager, they, they think Instagram is reality. They, they think it's, that's all, that's all they've known. They got a cell phone when they were like five years old or whatever. And they're raised on the internet. Uh, so they have no idea what's real and what's not. So yeah, this is where the, uh, the cool field was. Uh, that I showed last time. 
really cool. Uh, it looks like England, like kind of the England countryside over there, away from the Africa kind of uh, favelas here. But yeah, it's like they don't know anything else. It's the biggest waste they have no. It's like the Mar Marilyn Monroe's, the Pamela Andersons, the beautiful, sexy girls, strong girls, the complete women who are fulfilled and happy in every single way. It's like they're dead. They're gone. Um, and we're filled with like frustrated, miserable girls. And I'm saying to all girls, just delete your social media, delete everything, and start judging on what's real in real life. And you know, the body, the physical health, the mental health, you know, and everything, and just what's real and start judging by real life instead of text on the screen. And I promise you, you know, start living by online, and I promise you, you'll be sexy, happy, fulfilled in every single way because the radiation, even just the radiation from the phone and the lifestyle of being lazy, being too comfortable, it's just, it's just killing you in every single way. It's making you unsexy. But you're wondering like, oh, why am I unsexy? Why am I not getting not, not enough likes? Why does no one like my body or anything? Oh, all these, I'm not beautiful like that and all, all this kind of stuff. And because just throw away your phone, it's all bullshit. It's all just trying to kill you. Like everything. So yeah, I mean, there's a quote that says that, that if, if you put a, if you put a fox, if you put a wild fox into a cage, um, I like the wild free foxes, I like the one, like the people like me, me and you, who were like born in the, like the eighties and nineties, who know real life, real freedom. You put a free wild fox into a cage, he will fight you to the death. Imagine a free wild fox here. You try and put him into a cage, he will fight you and bite you to the, bite you and try and kill you. You know, he'll fight you to the death for freedom. But you make a make a fox born inside of a cage. He'll settle. He you he, he will never know what free freedom and being wild and for free and fulfilled and happy. He'll never know what that is. It's the same with women. These days, the girls that are born into the internet day and age, they have no idea what freedom and happiness is. Um, so they look at, I mean, they, I wonder if they look at pictures like Terry Black and just wonder like, oh, why am I not, not sexy like that? Why am I not that sexy, you know? It's like you see this, like the 30 year old girl I mentioned in the last, last video, she looked, she looked 10 years younger than the 18 year old. The 18 year old looked like um, she was 40. She looked, she was had like bags underneath her eyes and like a lot of girls in Paraguay did. They were in, cause social media and the lifestyle, it's killed the body and it's killed the mind. So it's not you guys, it's, it's them. They are, they are, and they just, and no one can tell them the truth anymore. And I'm sick of everybody saying, oh no, it's the guy's fault, guys have got to be perfect. No, guys can't do all the way. You got to, we're all in, in this together. Fuck that shit, I mean. Girls these days are fat and overweight and disgusting and they think that then they didn't think they deserve anything and and they want money and everything. And so yeah, but no, the real girls like the girl I met in Foster Ladies, she just wanted sex, she didn't want money. Um she was really happy and wanted the best kind of uh life, fulfilling life from uh from experiencing sex, life, adventure and the things that matter in life. Because when you get older, that that's all that'll matter, the memories. And the um, fulfillment from ta from taking the leap and doing everything. Like guys, people when they're dying, they reg they don't regret. Oh, I didn't have enough money. They regret not taking the leap. They regret not taking the chances and not being real and living real life. And the biggest one of the other biggest regrets is uh, following what society said. They think, oh, I wish I followed the fire within or my heart. I wish I didn't follow what people said. What people, and that's why. They're miserable these days because that's all they follow these girls is oh what will Instagram think what will these people think on Instagram what well, my face it's the most pathetic kind of lifestyle I've and it's killing them it's making them fat miserable disgusting girls um, so yeah I wish we can go back to 2010 and experience the girls that that like that like the Tory Black that I like, like that all the time and everyone's free and liberated so this is why I like places like this because it just reminds me of being in the 90s in England, um, or the early 2000s. Really cool life, really cool nature. You just feel alive.